Hello, my name is Carlos Agreja. This is a Java application. This is the date difference calculator. It takes a from date and a to date and calculates the difference. So, enter a to date and I can, uh, let's try and hit enter here, nothing. Um, so yeah, you gotta actually enter a date. Um, well, I can't show one exception. But this, well, I can actually show both exceptions. Yeah. All right. Um, so that calculator already. These are all. Uh, these all have action event listeners. So let's change this. It's going to say select the from date. If if it's null, it's going to tell you to select the date. So let's select a four and let's try and do that just to invoke um, a calculation select to date so the to date is not selected we need to select a to date so let's select that it's a 10 day difference there um, zero years so that did automatically calculate but zero years so <coughs> difference in days so it's 10 days let's see let's select today's dates and from date cannot be after to date so this is just gonna yeah so keep telling you that can't calculate this if the date is uh, further ahead of the to date just like the date before and after and uh, date two, so the before date can't be the from date can't be after the two date, and so this pretty much uh, I'll just and hit enter here and there you go. I did add format so that this commas because I do have seconds. So we can see the seconds. It's much much easier to read with the. Uh, you don't have to count each one. To <laughs> it's much easier to see with commas. I find it. Uh, I like I like it like that. So I added that format. Then that's pretty much what the application does. So I'll go over the GUI and uh, the logic. All right. So here's the logic. Here's date difference calculator class from days to seconds that just stores the calculation I calculate the days and then I calculate all these from the days so that's that this array month days is how many days are in each month uh, February has 28 but on a leap year it has 29 so I store 28 and uh, if it's a leap year, I add one. And I do the same thing here, total days in the year. It's going to be the same amount of days unless it's the leap year, then I add a day. Month, that's an iterator that I use. So as you can see here, there's an array of months, 12 months, that stores all the days for each month. How many days are there are for each month? And to iterate through that, I'll use this month iterator. That's all that is. Two Gregorian calendar objects that are used for for the from and the to date. The first constructor allows you to just create an instance without having to pass in dates, and it defaults to the current date and time this will just make all the values return zero so that's the default it's the way I use it in this application I use this constructor but if you can set the from and to date right from the constructor so if you want to do that, if you have the from and to date already, you can do that. And I so I use this init method 
which initializes the constructor. Uh, here's the init method. So it takes the dates, and you can see it just sets everything to zero. It sets the uh, calendar from Gregorian calendar to with the dates. I'll show that later. Over here, we set the days for each month, how many days there are in each month. So we have an array of 12 months. We have the total days in each year. So for each month, unless it's if it's February, we set it to 28. I'm not sure exactly what it would output. So I made sure that it's 28 because that's what I want it to be. Total days, again, just the total days is just going to add whatever the value is for each month. So we have a total days. And again, if it's February, we'll add a day. If it's a leap year, we'll add a day to the total uh, days in a year. Um, so that's how I handled that. Uh, else, month days, month equals. So using the uh, Gregorian calendar, get actual maximum method, and day you can pass day of month. It will return the uh, maximum days for that month. So that's what we want. We want to know the total amount of days for that month, and uh, so that method works. And that's how I loop through the array and fill the array with all the uh, days in each month that's how I do that and while I'm doing that I keep adding that value to total days in a year and that will store that value for when I need that to know how many the total days in a year and then I, again I could just add one if it's a leap year uh, and if it's a February and a leap year I can add one so so if I'm going through months or if I'm going by years I can use uh, that's why I have both of those and that's all set that's all this does this is just initializing everything no calculations or anything that's all that does so now we have the calculate method check if the dates are the same year and then I have this else condition if the dates are not the same year so uh, I have two separate methods they handle these uh, situations differently so and once we get the days so we're gonna get the days either way and uh, then we can calculate everything and then that's pretty much it that's calculate so once we get the days we'll get the total days and then we can Use days to get months, months to get years, days, hours. Use days times 24 to get hours, and hours to get minutes, and minutes to get seconds. That's how I did that. Okay, so calculate is an overloaded method. So we have calculate, doesn't take anything, and is also a calculate we can pass the dates. And it will just set the dates and then run calculate so just change the dates and then run calculate if the dates are invalid so if from is after two that's invalid it returns false so that can be handled from wherever this method is called um, next is the calculate days for same year so how this is calculated if it's the same year we already know it's the same year if we're calling this method and then it also checks for the same month so if it's the same month then we just need the difference in days we need the uh, from date days and the two date days so it's just a difference so the two date days subtract the front date days and whatever's left there that's going to be the total days 
now if it's just the same if it's the same year but they have different months this code is ran so the from date get month store that month here days we get the partial in days for that month the first month it's not going to be a full month <clears throat> well it shouldn't be it's, it should be a partial month so we get the difference there whatever days there are uh, so if it's the middle 15 and it's you know uh, like 31 days whatever it will count from it will get the 15 to the 31 and then well increment once we get that number of days here that partial month then we can increment that month we're done with that month next will be full months up until the last month which be, will be another partial month so that's why we have the less than the last month because we don't want to include that last month we're just going to get all these full months now and if it's a leap year uh, February and a leap year we'll add a day but again February will still be 28 here so we'll just add that there and we'll increment the month um, and this is the array so we'll get this will give it the total amount of days for each one of those months whatever month that is and then we'll get the remaining days of the last month and that partial is just going to be whatever day of the month it is so if again if it's 15 it will just it'll be 1 through 15 in this case for the end month so we just need the day of the month and we'll add that on to days and then days for different years is done that's the method so that's how we get the days if the years are different or actually I'm sorry that's how we get the days if the years are the same <laughs> Now we get the years, uh, days if the years are different. Okay. So the days if the years are different. Okay. So how we calculate this is we did, we saw we have the same year. It's just, we're just dealing with partial months. We have, we had, we had a partial month, we had some months in the middle there and then we had a partial month. Now that's basically the same exact concept with years. We're going to have a partial year, we're going to have full years in the middle, we're going to have a partial year at the end. Same exact concept here except we got to include years. We got to do the same exact thing we did for months with years. So that's pretty much it. Um, Calculate the rest of the first year, so we'll do the same thing, month, get the difference in month, days, uh, February, and it's, if it's February in a leap year, we'll add a day, increment that month, we're done with that, except this time we know that they're different years, so we're just going to get the rest of the months up to the end of the year, as you can see, less than 12, and the array for months will be 0 through 11, so 11 is actually December and the array index so same exact thing for the leap year February leap year out of day days get the days of the month increment boom we're done there for that partial year um, calculate the beginning of the last year so we do the same thing for the last year month equals get the month of the two dates get the uh, days, add that on there for the last month. We'll go down a month this time. So if this was March uh, 15, we'll get the 15 days. Go down, count, go down now. We're done with March. Go down to February. So we'll uh, go in here. And yes, in this case it is February. Uh, I don't know if it's a leap year, but this will check for us. This is leap year method from the Gregorian calendar and you just pass in calendar year. So 
add a day if it is uh, add the month days and then we'll go down so it'll be in January add the days for January and then we'll go down and we're done so we get the two partial years um, now we just get the years in between it says here in this case we already did the first partial year and the last partial year so added one on here and the two year so which is already less than so it's not going to include it and so that's that so that's already one less this is one more so that uh, excludes the first and last years so we could just get the ones in between now days plus equals days in a year okay again uh, we gotta check for leap years so if it's leap year we'll just add a day uh, if it's no leap year then it's just gonna be this amount of days if it's leap year we'll add an extra day and that's it just increment the year go around until we get all the years and check if they're leap years or not if we need to add an extra day so that's why I have it like that and we'll get the days and that's how we calculate if the date the years are different so that's how I did that and then we got setters and getters this takes a date and then we set the Gregorian calendar and we use the uh, date class get year get month get date and we'll pass those in as parameters to set our Gregorian calendar and uh, do the same thing for the two dates Gregorian calendar and we use the getters so once we calculate it we don't have to calculate every single time uh, if, what, so when I do the combo box I can switch to days, months, years, all we gotta do is get use the getters and that's it so that's this class I'm gonna go over to the GUI okay here's the GUI class it's a JFrame date difference calculator Declared as calculator. This is the class I just went over. Boolean. Dates changed. So if the dates are changed. We know that we need to calculate again. Any components for the J frame. Calculator equals new date difference calculator. And you can see I use the I set the default to just create an instance. I don't pass it any dates dates changed equals false so that's all initialized calculate if the combo box days months years if I change that it calls the calculate method this is the date picker from date picker from get date cannot equal null or else do nothing if it's null if it has a date actually select something then get that date store it here pass it here we'll set that in the class we just went over for the setter we'll set the uh, Gregorian calendar with that date for the from dates changed equals true and if the other picker is not null then we can go ahead and calculate if it's null that's not ready to calculate but that's just a way to automatically calculate so if I change the date it will automatically output the result I don't have to go and need a calculate button or anything like that it just automatically does it so all three of them just automatically calculate when they're invoked so this does the same exact thing just the opposite uh, obviously it checks itself and uh, then it checks the other one, the opposite one, before it calculates. So what dates picked is it returns a boolean. It this is what you saw with the message boxes. Select from date. You must select two dates. From date cannot be after two date. Okay, so this just checks once all of these pass. Then it returns true and a calculation is made if any of these fail then it's not ready to be calc for a calculation it still needs the data is either not valid or null so that's what this does 
and here's the calculate method so you can see the dates picked is here it will do it the check with all these pass then it's okay to continue otherwise just do nothing that's why it's, it's this all inside the if statement so units is the days months years whatever's passed from that combo box whatever the text is it returns that if dates change which is uh, boolean that is set when this is the date picker if you change the date it uh, sets that to true and then if so let's say I just I, both of these are set but I changed one it will come in here it will get that date it will set it to the calculator object it will set this to true and then the other one is already we already set the other one so it will go on to calculate and then when it does that this will be true so that means we gotta calculate so the calculator object will call the calculate method and it will calculate all the days again and then we'll get uh, all the updated values uh, right there so and then this will get set, set the false so if I do the combo box and I call calculate again it will come in here and this will be fine but this will be false so we don't need to calculate again we just need to come over here to the switch statement we need to get days months years we don't want to be calculating every single time so that's the reason I did it this way and yeah it's just the switch statement whatever the combo box is we have the number here and it will get stored whatever number we need days seconds and down here I have a string com is num com is num just takes the num integer num and formats that so that it has commas so using the number format get number instance pass local dot us dot format and then we can just get a string that has that number but with commas and then I just output that string the number with commas and with a space and then units so that units is going to be one of these months years hours whatever's output there and that gets output to a label and that's it so it changes the text on the label and that's how that gets output that's the end of this class thanks for watching